Which camera am I looking at? You look right at here. This one, that one? That's just the monitor. You're looking right here. Yeah. Um, and conversing, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. To start Absolutely. off, you got to give us the first two verses of O Canada. Okay. Right. Oh, and really make Canada, it good. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. Car ton bras oh, porté les payeurs, il s'est porté <laughs> la croix. Jay looks ton French. histoire you are est French. une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. <laughs> oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Nice. Let's go, Senators. Not the politicians, <laughs> the hockey team in my hometown. You are so French. I am, well, I am bilingual. I was raised by Anglophone parents. Um, but education rights came in with the, we finally got our own constitution in 1982. And uh, so they established that what is called the French immersion system. My parents had the fortitude to put me into that. And that's where I learned all of my French. And right. so the anthem that I just sung to you is um, the only way I know to uh, French immersion kids know how to sing the anthem <laughs> is English. English at the start, then we transition to the French middle, right. and then we close out on English right, again. Right. I, I don't think I can sing it, Brian actually. <laughs> I don't Love think, you, man. I don't think I can sing it start to finish just in English or just in French. I, yeah, I, like, I have to go that yeah, way. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we are rolling, so okay. here on the camera. Yep, absolutely. In five, four, three. Thanks for joining us here on Indivisible. I'm your host, John Stubbins. We're coming to you live from CPAC 2023. I'm here with my friend Jay Denny, who is here to give us a report on Canada, all things, <laughs> Trudeau. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but now the children are under the gun. What is going on, Jay? Well, you know, it's uh, it's great to be here, John. Um, uh, you know, to, to come down. It's my first time at, at CPAC since uh, uh, 2016. 16, I think. Oh, wow. Okay. When he's 15 or 16. So he used to come down often when I was working in the previous conservative government um, under, uh, was then um, International Trade Minister Stockwell Day um, in 20, uh, 2009, just before I started work there, and 2010, 2011, um, and then a uh, little bit of a break, and then I was here in yeah in 2016, and then this is my first time back. So well, a little bit different of atmosphere than back yeah. some of those years. Crowds well, a little bit absolutely. crowds a little bit smaller and a little bit, um, but met so many great people. Oh and, yeah. Uh, so that's that's one of the one of the good things is just coming here and just having those having those discussions and and trying to get out of this, um, uh, trying to get out of this thing where just anything to do with the right wing in the United States is just labels you, just gets you crucified in the Canadian media. Yeah, so. but guess what? I, I well, I'm just saying, this is to the Canadian crowd. Yeah. Um, there comes a point where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know, and it's the same thing in the United States. And I, I made the decision at the beginning of this war that I don't care. So you want to call me a racist? <laughs> fine. You want to try to cancel me? Fine. I'll find a way around you, through you. You're not gonna stop me. So, you know, they do it, uh, but we're fighting back now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we alluded to it earlier. Look, we may come up with innovative companies to combat what they do, and they may not be as big as Pepsi or Coca-Cola right off the bat, but we'll get there. <laughs> right. Okay, so <laughs> they think because they have Twitter and Facebook now that they're gonna run the show forever. Right. Not the case. No. <laughs> Believe me, we're working on things <laughs> that are going to fix you on that. Right. So, what is going on with the kids up in Canada? Yeah. Now so, their lives are threatened? I mean, my God. Well, <clears throat> it's just, uh, I mean, it, it goes back to the whole issue and, and where you stand on on uh, on sanctity of life in, in sort of compassion. So, we brought For in... children? Well, let's back it up. And so, we'll give you a little bit of a sure. quick history uh, on you know on medically assisted intervention in dying or made as they call it uh, euth euthanasia as others would call it so 
Um, so we brought the La Trudeau's government brought this brought this in. It was it was dealing with Supreme Court rulings. There was things that had to be brought in. They had to actually make it legal. The, the court said that it's a right to access this in Canada, and so they did. And so it was limited terms. It was supposed to be for you know terminal illness, where there's no sign of recovery, physical ailments. So then um, the bill was amended. Um, to actually include psychosomatic and um, mental illness okay. um, that was chronic and terminal. And so that's sort of in a hold right now. But there was a committee that actually just in the last week or two that uh, made recommendations that, um, that uh, it be expanded um, to, oh, to, to, to minors under the age of 18. That's, that's not law, but it's just, it's just sort of having that discussion. And that so, discussion needs to be stunted quick. <laughs> Well, the, here's the problem, John, that I that I've had and others have is that we have we have not in the Canadian healthcare system, which is a lot more so, obviously socialized and government publicly funded than what you have here. But even with that, we there's been a chronic underfunding, at least in my opinion, of palliative care, of and that's the real way of dying with dignity is to be looked after, to have your loved ones around you, sure. care for you, bring Absolutely. up your spirits through through that. Through that, you know, that when when you you know, I always say that you know, the power and the love of your friends and family is the best pill for pain. Oh, absolutely. And so we absolutely. have we, we have a real disconnect there in terms of hospice societies that are always struggling for money with act with um, you know, in, in not enough access to palliative care. And then if you're a palliative care firm um, and you receive public funding but don't offer made as a service, the, like the the government will come in and threaten your license. That just that, that having that threat hang over your head. Yeah, that's a big burden for somebody because their livelihood, their own family is at stake. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a real threat, and, and you've got to imagine what does somebody that has that hanging over them as a possibility mm -hmm. that can be done to him and him and his or her or the family. What next? So I just look at it and I say, okay, if we have 10 facilities that are doing this, and nine of them are offering medically assisted intervention in dying, and one isn't. One is taking the palliative care until natural time of natural death approach. What is the problem with that? Why can't we have access to both those options? Um, so we're supposed to have we're supposed to have a tenant of universal. We've had a major shift. The government has finally said, and the Canadian opinion is finally shifting in terms of health care, where the great majority say, because of the last three years with COVID, that the system is broken. We need time oh, for innovation. Absolutely. And, the, and Doug Ford in the, in the province of Ontario have started to do that with some of the bills that they've done, where they actually are bringing that, bringing that innovation uh, in there. And they're saying, it's still going to be publicly funded, but we're going to open it up to private delivery. So it's not just going to be state hospital. And then people say, oh, well, we got this. But if you've ever been to a walk-in clinic in Canada, you've received private care. It's paid for by the government. I haven't, but you but it's have. a sure. but it's a privately run system. It's I not got run, you. It's not. It's licensed by the state. The doctors are registered through the state. But that facility is a for profit. Yeah, we've had that model for for decades, and I, it's nothing to be scared of. So these baby steps, um, you know, I think are a good thing in, in terms of that regard. But anyways, quick question. Yeah. Um, and, and again, Canada's huge, obviously. Yes. Uh, there's so it, it's funny be, it's funny because uh, this is probably about ten years ago. Yep. Um, I saw an article in the paper. Okay. And the article said, "Come up to Canada, and for a million dollars, a million American dollars, I could buy a city's worth of land." Okay, mm -hmm. and a part of Canada that was totally undeveloped, mm -hmm. but I can go in there and create my own city mm -hmm. for a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say a million dollars to buy it, right? And then another trillion probably to yeah, develop. Yeah, to develop it. Yeah, get your sewer lines but, and yep. But I always found that intriguing because I was I'm a military veteran and uh, I love the outdoors. Right. I love hunting, fishing, all that. Yep. And uh, we'll get you up and meet you a guy named Blake Calkins, if you're or uh, Blaine Calkins, head of our uh, conservative hunting and angling caucus. Oh, I love him. Yeah. I love him all right. Yeah, and Bob Sopak, who I used to work for, who's now retired. Hi, Bob, out in Sandy Lake, Manitoba. Um, but yeah, you got to come up and, and see some oh, of those guys. Are that, you kidding? While they still have access to, to their semi automatic rifles that Trudeau is going to confiscate. Well, we will love this. My show actually moved over to Hunt Channel. Right. And 
We joined forces uh, with Ted Nugent. We joined yeah. forces with Ted, Donald Trump Jr. Mm -hmm. So we're working with HunterNation.org. We're working with HuntTheVote.org. Mm -hmm. My show's on Hunt Channel. You see the synergy there. Yeah. So look, they're, it's gotten. They're going to confiscate airsoft guns if they look like. Well, look, there, there's, there, there, there's more. And so Tracy Wilson with the CCFR. Hi, Tracy, um, and uh, who lives in my part of uh, just east of Ottawa. And so, um, you know, they're putting up a fight because it's ridiculous. Well, you look right. at you look at misguided priorities. So they're going to spend four billion dollars buying back these 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 arms when oh, yeah. the real problem is smuggled handguns from your country. And they say, just ban the guns. It worked in Australia. It worked in the UK. Well, those are islands that don't share a land border with the largest gun toting nation in the country or in the world. So the problem. So they're spending four billion dollars to buy back guns from law abiding Canadians that were locked up in a safe. And they're putting what two hundred and fifty million dollars in on border enforcement, misguided priorities. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, it, it's 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 really crazy, but I got to tell you, there's a certain there's a part of me, yep, an adventurous side. And it can be Alaska as well. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll include Alaska. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, it's very attractive to me. And there are a lot of parts of Canada that are little known explored, if at all, inhabited, and you can go up there and probably live a heck of a life. But you've got to be able to get yeah, to and fro, obviously. Yep. My question is, after all that being said, you've probably been all over the all over the the, the entire country of Canada. Most of it, yeah. How are you viewed up there? What, what, are the, what are the in other words, do the people think highly of you? Do they think of you as a representative coming down here on their behalf? Oh no. I, I'm just curious, what do they think yeah, of you? Yeah, no. Well, if it, I don't know that they think much of me. I'm not really a known, <laughs> known entity. Somebody knows um, you up there. Well, there's saying. a few people that do know Somebody's me. Somebody's yeah. rooting you on. Somebody's, yeah, absolutely. But no, I'm not much of a known entity. I've been a, more of a, an, an organizer and a staffer and, behind and the scenes look, guy. looking at, yeah, right, behind hey, the scenes guy. That's fine. And, well, uh, well, Jay, how do you compare to other popular conservative Canadians like Cheryl and Delonte and Tyler? Yeah, how okay. Do, do you, yeah, so Cheryl's been around for, Cheryl's been around for a long time. And uh, you know, Cheryl was one of the first Reform Party MPs, and uh, Cheryl's what they call the dean of the party. So she's had the longest tenure, ninety either ninety seven I think or two thousand under the old Reform Party, then through Canadian Alliance, and then we merged Canadian Alliance and the Progressive Conservative Party merged to form the Conservative Party of Canada um, after just splitting the vote and handing the Liberals majorities for a decade. Oh, well, so we know that story. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I think the thing is, is that like, you know, conservatism, in a way, it was a great presentation at a, at a conference. It was called the Manning Network. Now it's Canada Strong and Free. Coming up in three weeks in Ottawa, by the way, Stephen Harper, Prime Minister, giving a keynote on Wednesday. So just quick plug for that. Um, but um, uh, and Pierre Poilievre, um, whose <laughs> campaign I helped did did some organizing work for. There is a Canadian member, former Canadian member of Parliament, right there. Ah, that's Carrie Diot from. Oh my God, hey, Carrie, there's a doing? one other Canadian line, here. Come, yeah, come, on come around. Come on in. Come, come on around. In. All right. Come around. This is wild. Yeah. What are you doing yeah. here? Uh, I thought um, I would. I'm covering this for uh, an outfit called Troy Media. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Have a seat, bud. So right. have a seat. We'll fit you in here. Tell us all about it, huh? Carrie well, Kerry was a member of parliament in Edmonton, Alberta. That's okay. right. Two terms, right? I just yeah, wow. his name too. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, this guy's good. Yeah. I like so, your shirt, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. I had my Pierre shirt on yesterday, and and uh, Kerry was, let's do a shout out, one of the best conservative staffers of all time. Used to work for Pierre Polyev, then worked for Kerry, now works for the Conservative Caucus Chair, Scott Reed. Sally Harris, big shout out. You are a legend. <laughs> and, uh, right? Ah, absolutely. Yeah. She's that absolute. She is legendary. legendary. She's just a, a force to be reckoned with in, 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 in Canadian uh, Parliament Hill staffers. And uh, so, yeah, we were just talking about how the couple of things we were talking about, the misguided policy on guns going after right. the law, law guns rather than enforcement at the border yep. for the pistols that come from this country. Right. And, and by uh, the way, folks, just so you know, that's <laughs> not Whitey Bulger sitting there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So if you thought yeah. he stepped up, <laughs> hold on to your hats, folks. It's not Whitey. So, yeah. Well, one of the things that's uh, yeah, a lot so, of people a lot of people know Justin Trudeau in this country. I can't ever since stand the, this guy. Ever since the trucker rally, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody. I had everybody Ted knows. Nugent on my show because of what they did with PayPal and GoFundMe and all yeah. that. Then they started on the American truckers. Yeah. And I said enough. 
So we got Ted on the show. We got Kip Coulter on the show. Look, you start taking people's money and messing with them down there where it lives, you hit them where it hurts, you're affecting their kids, their families, their mortgage. By God, Trudeau's got to go. I'm done go. with that. Done with that. And yeah. he's also now in the middle of a scandal because they're alleging interference from the Communist Party of, you're of damn China. Right. And this could be the end of him. He's got to be. It's got to be. Because I'm going to tell you right now, what I hear, people have had it with him. Well, They've we're hoping. With him. Here's, here's hoping, because I want to get back into Parliament. And uh, well, I think people are fed up. And it's, it's really interesting when Americans know who our Prime Minister is and dislike him as much as we do. Carrie, oh. Carrie probably doesn't <laughs> yeah, know we're this. not even a Canadian, for Look, God's Carrie. sake. I'm running. <laughs> oh, there you He's go. He's running. All right. You got your wish, pal. There you Did go. You as long exclusively? No, 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 no. As long as you're not running I just against me, seen. that's good. No, no, no. We're running against no, no, no. We'll get you in a different <laughs> race. You're both going to win. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want to kick some butt here. We're on the other side of the country. He's got an advocate and he's... Hey, that's great. That's right. That's great. By the way, you like to fish? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I told I him he's got to go see Blaine Calkins. Oh, Blaine, yeah. Happy he's a, up, guys. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's always good to have somebody who is a former game uh, officer in your caucus. Well, yeah, sure, and absolutely. He, and he, shout out to his staffer, Chris Everett, who's like, uh, you know, one of the gunny girls up there. Just yeah, uh, yeah just a, one of the one of the best hunters I, I've uh, I've had the good fortune to know. And so you know, it's really interesting. We every year we do a caucus, uh, sort of a one day retreat to uh, uh, the Stittsville gun yeah, range, the range right? yep. and you nice. look around and it's multi-party. Look around, it's like, okay, 30 conservatives, two liberals, no socialist new Democrats. Yeah. It's oh. really funny. Oh, man. Yep. I like that. Yeah, and it's I usually the Yukon guy from the liberal, uh, yeah. or somebody in a, one of the rare yeah. rural now, seats that they hold. I'm yeah. going to tell you right now, you guys get a hold of me. I'd like to come up there. Yeah, absolutely. Let's shake the tree loose a little bit up there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? absolutely. Okay? Yeah. I'll come up and shake it free with you. I'll bring Roger with me. Well, Cheryl, my favorite thing about Cheryl, she was one of the only MPs to vote in support of Donald Trump's Okay. Was it the parish accord, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Carrie's well, you've been in caucus with Cheryl. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Cheryl, Cheryl is solid. She yeah, was. I, like I used that. to sit right behind her, and she. You know what she'd do? She'd have her newspaper open of her local paper. She'd be writing cards of sympathy for people who's who had you know obituaries, obituaries, or, yeah. weddings, God bless baptisms, her. you name it. She yeah. was. She's solid. She is so constituent focused. Yeah. And um, and. Um, just unabashed in her ways. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? And this is very interesting for my audience. And they'll tell you, look, to us, to most Americans, the way that we view you guys up there, you're our friends and family to the north that we don't get to talk too much, right? Yep. But we sit down and we have a meeting of ideals. Our expectations, the things that we want out of life are pretty doggone similar. Okay? We want peace. Yep. Right? We want common sense law. You know, we don't we want people tampering with our dollars. That's right. You know, I mean, X, Y, Z, right down the line. And we're with you, okay? It's, I think we're at that time in history, and it's been since World War II. History repeats itself. We're not going to allow it to get that far this time, okay? But it's time that we stand together. It's time we stand together as neighbors and get rid of this horse crap. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Well, you know, you've got, you've got Biden, we've got Trudeau, and they that's both right. have to go. They both have to go, and that's the way it is. We need to spread that message across both countries. And I want to see you both in office. I appreciate it. And let me, by the way, let me have that. Yep. Because uh, Jay, before I forget, and Jay, I want to get, once you give the plug, where can they go to find you for your run? Give them the website right there at yeah, the camera. It's www.jdenny, so J-A-Y-D-E-N-N-E-Y.ca. It's the bare bones website for right now in the early stages of a, what will be the party nomination process, uh, which is similar to what you have for primaries here. But they can donate there? Uh, only Canadian citizens. Only Canadian so citizens? No, yeah, no So no donors. Americans, but all you Canada folk, you can donate there, number one. Number two, you might want to get involved grassroots, door-to-door, -door, foot patrol. Listen, you always get it done with a strong ground game. You can never have too much of that. And believe me, you get people knocking on doors, you shaking hands, you're talking to people face to face. That's how you get it done. Yep, absolutely. I mean, these are, these are these are bellwether ridings, and if we're going to have a majority conservative government in Canada, Kerry's got to Kerry's riding's got to go blue again. My riding's got to go blue again. These are ridings that were blue under Harper, 
and um, Blue and is Blue is good. Blue is conservative. Blue is good. Sorry, yeah. It's Blue is it's conservative. Opposite. Different ball game up yeah, there. It is yeah. a different ball game. So I always say when it comes to CPAC, the Canadians and Americans talk, <laughs> it's the Purple ah, Coalition. I love it. I it's love the it. Purple Coalition. Right That's at the right. 49th uh, parallel, it's purple. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Make well, sure you guys come back on the show. I want to have updated. I'll get, I, I don't get your I'll card. See you, I'll see you next CPAC. Make sure yeah. you give me your card, yeah, I'll okay? Do that. Well, we got two Canadians here, and we got to talk about something as most important, more po important than politics. Yeah. We got less than 20 games left to the, the playoffs. <laughs> talk to me about you there you like, go. You're the Senators and you're for the Oilers, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. The so, Sens are surging. Hey. The Sens are surging. <laughs> You know, it's always interesting about being an Ottawa Senators fan because the, the Senators winning is secondary in importance to those fans <laughs> than cracking on the Toronto Maple Leafs losing oh, every awesome. single game. But it's great to see it. I've got my playoff tickets uh, uh, reserved, so I'm hoping I get to go to a playoff game for the first time in, what, hope you a decade? Too. My buddy Tyson Berry, unfortunately, he's no longer an Oiler. He's a Nashville Predator. Good luck to you, Tyson, in Nashville. We'll hopefully see you at Madison Square Garden on March 19th. And uh, and to be honest, I think the, the one team that has a shot at the Cup finally is the Edmonton Oilers because they've got the best uh, player in hockey right now, Connor McDavid. Absolutely. And the second best player in Leon Dreisaitl. So it's gonna be good, although Boston's looking pretty strong. Boston's very strong. I mean, they're setting National Hockey League records. Wow. So yeah. it's, it's, it's an up, games all uphill year, so. battle. Well, the Rangers picked up Kane, and I mean, the trade deadline ended yesterday. Yep. Well, who There's do you hope. think came, was coming out of the trade deadline with the strongest trades? I well, mean, the Rangers, Rangers bulked up quite a bit. I mean, the Devils Terrence picking up Sanko. Timo, um, you know, so Oilers going right to, I think, the last buck on the salary yep. cap. So, you know, anything's afoot. I mean, the team gets hot. That We saw that. I mean, look at the Canucks, the Canucks. I mean, the Canucks made their Stanley Cup runs, which ended up both ended up in riots. In 1994 and 2011, <laughs> yeah. but they did it from coming like sneaking up through the back and getting hot in the playoffs. So I mean, really anything can happen. You got the Jets, um, you know. So you know how many te like I mean, you look at the Canadian teams that won't make it. I mean, Montreal's right. pretty much out. Exactly. Um, the Canucks are out. Who won't make it? Lots. Right. What, what has harmed <laughs> the, Can the psyche of the Canadian citizen more? Justin Trudeau as prime minister, or the fact that Canada hasn't won the Stanley Cup in 30 years since the Canadians won in 1990. Yeah, but we see Canadians hoist the cup on your American teams for the last 30 years. That's so right. it's got to be Trudeau. Oh, it's Justin Trudeau, hands, hands down. Hands I mean, down. only Justin Trudeau can make his dad look more popular. And his dad was the prime minister who destroyed our oil industry. And we had to rebuild. Now Justin's, uh, you know, the old. Uh, the uh, the what's the expression about the leaves or the oh the, yeah the, nuts the, don't the apple fall, doesn't fall the apple right. doesn't fall, fall right. apart from the tree yeah yeah he's another screw up and it's a rotten apple yeah yeah, yeah. rotten to the core baby <laughs> listen well, uh, let's go island yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go island hey, hey, you can tell man, he's in the house he's right. having a great hey, time let me one more one more little hockey thing okay my brother-in-law lives up in uh, up in northern Ontario. He's a, he's a big Leaf fan. Okay. Okay. I was born on April 30th in 1967. Okay. And what I make fun of my, my brother-in-law's for is that I was alive during the last Leafs Cup. I was alive for two days, albeit, <laughs> yep. because they won the Cup on May 2nd. But I was alive for two days when the Leafs last won the Cup. Yeah, well, there's always like a Montreal joke. What's the difference between Montreal and Toronto? So Montreal's got a Stanley Cup photo in color. <laughs> That's and right. Say, <laughs> and they said, what's the difference? And then the Oilers, you guys always, yeah. the Edmonton-Calgary rivalry. So uh, the Edmonton Oilers crack on the Calgary fan. They said, what's the difference between a, what's the difference between a bra and the Calgary Flames? Bra's got two cups. Uh, <laughs> the one thing we say about the And I'm a Calgary Flames fan. Uh, Ottawa Senators and the Calgary Flames. But I can even take that one in humor. And that goal was in in 2004 against... I saw against it. Tampa. Uh, oh well. well. We make fun of the oh. Rangers and we say that they've won one cup since penicillin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one cup since ah, bread. That's about right, man. That's about right. Yeah. Uh, look, great Canadians here. Obviously, patrons of the country. We've got to get Trudeau out of there. Okay. Thumbs up, Canadians. Let's get it done. This cycle, I want to see you get it done. Thanks for joining us here on Indivisible. Right. Thank you. And Thanks. we'll help to have you back here. Go Pierre. Updates on the election. <laughs> Take a commercial break. Be right back.